Greetings, everyone. Dr. Brian Scott with you. This is uh, the last day of January, Wednesday, the 31st of January, 2024. Hard to believe, isn't it, how time is flying by so quickly. This is Insight to the End Times. Thank you for joining us today. We have been studying Bible verses, scriptures that talk about the end of the age, that are prophetically telling us about the end of uh, the, the time that we're living in. Uh, they're prophetically telling us about the... Um, uh, seven years of tribulation, the coming of the Antichrist, the battle of Armageddon, all these types of end time terms. Here's another end time terms. It is trending right now, very heavily it's trending, World War III. We have discussed that. We will discuss it again in a few days or a few weeks. These insights to the end times tell us how close we're getting to the end of the age and i really want to encourage you to go back over the last two weeks of our podcast we have shared some very very important information on the end of the age where we are etc cetera, etc cetera. and you have to keep in mind we can't we can't say exactly how close we are but we can say this we are getting closer and closer time is running out Time is running out. Yes, uh, this past Sunday was the uh, uh, what we would call semifinals in the NFL Super Bowl race. And the teams playing, uh, getting inside of that last two-minute warning, time is running out. They are very anxious. They are really moving quickly. If they can get a first down to prolong their their ability to hold on to the ball, they're racing back to the line to to uh, uh, get going, and and they can't waste any time. And we that's where we are on God's timetable. We can't waste any more time. We're getting so close. Well, I want to continue our discussion on will you qualify for the pre-tribulation rapture? And it, and I would suggest you go back to this past Monday. Hey, we have studied the pre-tribulation rapture, etc. Will you qualify for the pre-tribulation rapture? Yesterday, we indicated that you've got to meet three, three uh, requirements. Number one, you must be born again. Number two, you have to be baptized, possibly both in water and in the Holy Spirit. And then number three, you've got to live your life full time for the Lord. You've got to endure to the end. So I want to look at some more things from the Bible today. If you haven't been, pers if you've prayed the prayer of salvation, check off the very first point. But if you haven't been living as a Christian and, and living the Christian lifestyle, you can't check off the third point that we studied yesterday. And here's the issue. Many people believe that as the rapture gets closer and closer, that they'll, they'll tune it up and, and they'll make the cut. But I want to suggest to you that you're still living your life by your standards and not by God's standards. And because you're living by your standards, you're giving yourself higher marks than you deserve. I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I've witnessed it for many years now that a person evaluating themselves by themselves always gets great marks. But if anyone else is evaluating them, uh-uh, not the case. So you've got to get yourself to a place where you're going to stand and live by God's standards. You've got to endure right to the very end. Now, I want to get into Matthew chapter 25 with you. It's the parable of the ten virgins. And just before we do that, I want to suggest to you, if you go back and read about Noah and the ark, you're going to find out something that's very interesting. When Noah got onto the ark with his family members, eight of them in total, all of the animals were already on the ark. Guess who closed the door to the ark? It was God himself whose hand came down and closed the door to the ark, God decided enough is enough, we're ready to go. Why is that important? Because when the pre-tribulation rapture occurs and Jesus returns to the earth with a, a loud sound and the shout of an angel and the, and the uh, tooting of the trumpet, the statement, come up hither, that will be the statement that God is determining who comes and who doesn't. Let's get into Matthew 25 for a minute. This is the parable of the ten virgins. Without going into great detail, I want to point out to you that the word virgins is not a sexual term here. It means that they are believers who are uh, walking away from sin and living a pretty good life. 
they, they are they are fairly what we would call clean believers, but they have they have these lamps, and the lamps have oil, and the lamps represent their lifestyle, and the oil represents the Holy Spirit, and they're waiting for the bridegroom to come for the wedding cele- feast in the celebration, and so when the bride when the announcement comes that the bridegroom comes. He's a type and shadow or a symbol of, of Jesus returning for the church. When the announcement is made, he's coming. There are five virgins who are called wise virgins because their lamps are full of oil. In other words, their lamps are full of every aspect of the Holy Spirit possible. They're ready to light their lamps, go out into the dark, have their way lit. They enter in, they're received, they're accepted. But the five other virgins who live a casual, careless, do what we want to do when we want to do it type life, they're called foolish. They didn't have enough oil to light their lamps. They asked the wise virgins for oil. They were refused. They were told, you know how to get it and where to get it. Go get it. Church people aren't used to blunt talk. They're used to being Honey, everything's going to be okay. Instead of direct, bold talk. Jesus was never afraid of that. So those wise virgins go in, and the foolish virgins finally get to the door to go into the celebration. But guess what? The door was closed. They did not make it. Why am I sharing this with you? Because in Christianity, in what we call the body of Christ... This is an illustration in Scripture from Jesus that across the entire body of Christ, at best, only 50% will be ready for the rapture of the church. Only 50% will be ready. Now, you might say, that's pretty harsh. Well, there's other examples in Scripture. Jesus in Matthew 24, Luke chapter 21, he describes two men in the field working, one taken, one left. Two women at the, at the grist mill, one taken, one left. Two individuals in the bed, one taken, one left. Jesus had two thieves on either side of him, one on the left, one on the right. One essentially repented, the other one refused. The one who repented went with him into paradise, the other one was lost. 50% rule. In other words, 50% of the people that are claimed to be Christians may not make it. In fact, I don't, I don't think there's any doubt they won't make it because the scriptures are pretty clear. What, why is this important? Because I've met a lot of people. First of all, I've been studying prophetic scriptures for about 45 years, pretty seriously. And I have spent a lot of time with some of the great teachers of what we call end times or eschatology and have uh, had received their correspondence their letters their books their tapes or cds they're been in their meetings i have spent a lot of time and i've worked with a lot of christians my law practice 17 years of law practice at least half of my clients were christians or they went to church we've been pastoring for just all short of 40 years And I've been working with Christians and non-Christians throughout all those years. And here's what I've found. Most people expect to make it because they said a prayer, but I can't find enough evidence or proof as a lawyer to ever, ever prove that they are what we call a a good, strong, everyday, 24-7 type Christian. I'm talking even about pastors that I can't find enough evidence. Now, I'm not trying to be critical. I'm just giving you my personal observations that uh, stuff that you would need to make it in the courtroom, can't get, I can't find it, can't provide it. I'd lose the case. I don't like losing. That's why I'm suggesting to you, you must endure to the end. Don't miss tomorrow. It's going to be really good.